Manchester United, it's an interesting run that we've seen from them of late because, well, I'd say more than interesting, quite shocking when you think of that result at Anfield, 7-0, which nobody would have expected. Then they bounce back in the Europa League. And then we see that game at the weekend where obviously you have to put in the big caveat that is Casemiro getting a red card in this clash and it finishing nil-nil. Are they on a downward trend? No. No, no, they're not. Uh, look, I mean, they have a brief, they had a brief window to join the, the title uh, 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 race, but we felt that they needed to be perfect, right? And, and obviously, Liverpool has derailed those plans. And, you know, I, I kind of said at, at that time when they were at their best and kind of uh, clawing themselves back to that title run, that may be unrealistic, but I think if they were to continue that without any setbacks, I really believe that Manchester United would be in the conversation. Uh, I think Arsenal and Manchester City are kind of doing their job, so maybe that was always going to be difficult. But uh, make no mistake, nothing changes for me when I look at Manchester United. They will finish in top four, not easy. Obviously, Newcastle and Spurs are kind of, you know, getting back to that after some, uh, uh, you know, bad games or, or, or soft patches. Uh, but this is this is a sleeping giant that has been awakened, Manchester United. And and top four, that's all they need. They have a title already. They have two competitions that they can still win trophies. And come next year, they're going to be one of the favorites. And who knows, maybe even the favorite. So nothing changes for me. Obviously, they've shown in a way that the Liverpool result was a one-off. You know, we saw that against Betis. This obviously is unfortunate in many ways, but I think the Casemiro's red card greatly impacted that side. And even with 10 men, they looked apart at times. They, they have some issues that they'll fix in the offseason, but nothing changes uh, for me in terms of Manchester United being back at their best. Nothing changes, you say, but you just said top four rather than top three, which I feel many have been saying. And I'm not just saying that you were saying that it would be top three for them. It makes no difference. Three or four makes no it difference. It doesn't make a difference, but do you see them holding on to top three rather than top four? Sure. Because there's pressure now. Uh, there is pressure in third or fourth. I think, you know, Manchester United ahead of the season, they would have, I mean, be. Very, very happy being top four, even the beginning of the season, without knowing what Ten Hag may or may not do. The Ronaldo situation, you know, losing to Brentford 4-0, where some said, well, maybe Ten Hag's not good enough. I don't think it makes an iota of difference if they finish third or fourth. I mean, really, you know, uh, there isn't a difference. All you need to do is get in the Champions League and get ready for next season with everything that Ten Hag has accomplished so far right now and with the transfer window and, you know, addressing two or three needs for Manchester United. Again, I think United are on the way to be a title contender next season. And that's all that matters. One trophy in the bag and possible two others. Pretty good season considering. So Casemiro's absence, I actually made a mistake yesterday missing the FA Cup game because he'll miss that FA Cup game, first of all, against Fulham, then Newcastle, Brentford and Everton. He would be back for the Nottingham Forest game if nothing changes in the meantime with that four-match ban. How costly will his absence be? And does that mean the return of McFred? Well, it's going to be costly. We've seen what he's done for this team. It's obviously playing, uh, you know, that team is absolutely different, especially now with, I don't know if that idea is going to continue with Bruno Fernandes playing kind of next to him. He did that with Christian Eriksen, right? I mean, Christian Eriksen uh, was kind of holding midfielder, but with the freedom to create and do uh, almost anything he wants because Casemiro would sweep everything uh, in behind him. So, uh, uh, you know, that changes things. There's no questions about that uh, 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 for them. He's a big loss. That's already his second record red card uh and previously k if you remember i don't think he's gotten any at real madrid has he i mean he's always he, been... he did he did get a few but it was double yellows that got him sent yeah. off and obviously he drew he did always walk a fine line as you know and they used yeah. to say how did he not get sent off but in that position you almost has to right i mean if you're a player that plays in that position at the highest level of football and you don't get uh uh you know don't get a red card you don't miss time tackle tackles i mean uh, you can't play that position it, it, that's that's what it requires now not condoning anything yesterday. I mean, I think he knew everybody else was almost okay. I don't think it was intentional. He was very, very late. It looked a lot worse on the, um, you know, uh, on the replay, I suppose, but that's what VAR is for, right? If you check in, you check in in, in slow motion and that didn't look good. It was right, in my opinion, uh, 
uh, to give him a red card for that. But uh, it, it's a big loss. I mean, Casemiro has become an anchor to everything that Manchester United do well. And so you're always going to miss a player like that. Yeah, so we'll see what happens in the midfield for Manchester United in these upcoming games as they look to bounce back from what's been a difficult couple of games for them in the Premier League. Thank you very much for watching ESPN FC on YouTube. For more highlights, analysis and exclusive content, be sure to subscribe.